everybody, my name is Tom Solid, and if you're one of my Paperless Movement community, I welcome you back. If you're not, feel free to subscribe and join our awesome community. Just after GoodNotes 5 was actually released, I published a video about it and my first impressions of it. And also on Twitter, you could see many complaints about bugs and crashes and, you know, things not migrating, pages disappearing and so on. Also in my Facebook group, the Paperless Movement Facebook group, where we actually exchange things like this. In there, people have been complaining about issues they had with the GoodNotes 5. The thing that worried me the most was when they used my digital journaling GoodNotes 5. It was working perfectly in GoodNotes 4, it still works perfectly in NodeShelf 2 and Notability, but there were some issues using GoodNotes 5. First of all, they tried to address all these crashes going on. And you know, they have also had problems with migrating things from GoodNotes 4 and GoodNotes 5. And you can see this on this long list of updates going on until today, where just continuously new updates were released. And they also were hard working hard on lags because some of you actually noticed some lag during writing in GoodNotes 5. Then they also improved document import and export performance, improved page copy and paste performance, and they further reduced storage usage. There was also a comment in my Facebook group that when exporting the pages as PDF, the file size was very huge, about 40 megabytes, which is really large for a document exported from GoodNotes. You know, people are actually exporting single pages to send it via email. And if you have a file size with 40 megabytes, you can't send it via email. That's the problem here. There were also mentionings about, you know, problems with palm rejection in GoodNotes 5. They also addressed this. And they also fixed the broken PDF links when you exported a PDF for editing. And then they added a missing feature that was available in GoodNotes 4, which was the bookmarks feature. It was a highly requested feature from many out there, but they renamed it. It's called now custom outlines. So what you can actually do, you can make an outline of your document and that's really awesome because you have like a content list afterwards. So um, they also made it possible that you can migrate your old notes from GoodNotes 4 to GoodNotes 5 and conserve these bookmarks, bookmarks which will become these outlines. So Shin Suzuki actually on Twitter mentioned it already on the 2nd of March, so one and a half months after release of GoodNotes 5. GoodNotes 5 has become much smoother than it was in the first version. Now it's time to move on from GoodNotes 4. And I think, yes, now it's a better time than just after release to move on to GoodNotes 5. Now we come to something really interesting, which is new features coming to GoodNotes 5 and also missing features because what about the auto backup? What about the synchronization with G Drive? Is this coming or not? So we will go into this now. So if you're in Germany, you might know Lars Bobach. Lars Bobach has a podcast and he has also a YouTube channel where he is talking about note-taking apps, productivity tips and so on as well. And in his latest podcast, he was actually talking to Gabriel. He is the, actually the, the you know, he's actually the social media guy from GoodNotes 4 and the press guy and he's writing the blogs for GoodNotes 4 and so on. And then he's really involved in the interaction with the community in GoodNotes 4. And he's usually also the guy who is answering on Twitter when it comes down to questions. This podcast is really interesting because many features were discussed and what will come there. And first of all, he was mentioned that auto backs up will come a hundred percent. They also talked about uh, the possibility to add an Android version of GoodNotes 5. Then he actually mentioned that they are really working hard on the Mac app to be released. The Mac app is already in beta. It's about a thousand people already in this beta and testing the Mac app already. And Gabriel also made really clear that the Mac app is not to make handwriting notes because it makes no sense, isn't it? Having on the Mac handwriting capabilities, but what should be possible, and I agree with this, is that you can actually convert the text, the handwriting to text, so you can actually further process what you have in your notes. So actually you're sitting in a meeting, you're writing down your notes in GoodNotes, then you go back to your Mac and then you open your notes there and you can just copy paste the plain text into an email and process it further or you know in a document where you just want to work with it. 
So another feature, I showed you this in another video when I was talking about the Apple Notes, the no native Apple note-taking app actually, where you can just tap onto your iPad and a new note will open up. And Gabriel mentioned this, what I was already thinking as well. The problem is that Apple is really restricting developers to use all these features. So they have no access to this, to implement this. One workaround, Node Shelf 2 shows already, they built actually a widget. So you can quickly access notebooks or create a quick note. GoodNotes doesn't have a widget yet. However, there's a little workaround you can use, which is using the Apple's native shortcuts. So you can actually create a shortcut with GoodNotes 5 and place the shortcut in your widget list. So let's just show you how to do this. Okay, if you're on your start screen, um, you just have to swipe over to the left so you get access to your widgets. If you don't know about this, you can just go to the bottom, press edit, and then you can choose your widgets. Just to want to show you here, on the top, I have the Noteshelf widget I mentioned before. To achieve the same thing with GoodNotes 5, you actually can use the shortcuts. So if you don't have this shortcuts app available yet, you just go to the App Store and put in shortcuts. And there it is, just go to shortcuts, download it, and it's ready to go. Once you go into your shortcut section, just go to create new shortcut and then type in here good notes. You know, Siri already suggested. The first one is create quick note. So this is actually what we want. If you, if I just want to make a quick note, writing down a, down a phone number or something like that, I can choose this and below your notebooks will actually appear. So this means you can also make Siri shortcuts where you can access your notebook very fast. So in this case, we just take create quick note and that's already it. You can just tap on the right here on this, on this icon there and then we can just rename the shortcut. Um, good notes five, create note for example, done. And then you can also choose the icon here and the color. So let's make it blue for example and um, something like that and that's it so you are done and there is your shortcut so once we tap on this it will just open up the good notes 5 and it just created a new note for me and then we go out from the shortcuts we go to the left side and then we go again to edit here and we add the shortcuts widget which is here. You see this, just press the plus button and it will appear here. If you press and hold the handle, you can just bring it to the top, for example, done. And there we are with the shortcuts. So it will appear here, shortcuts will appear. If you have more, you can show more. So now either in here you swipe to the left or when you are outside, and you just, you know, press the home button and you see the lock screen. You also can just swipe to the left and then you just tap on this and it will just create a quick note. And it is really fast doing this. So I think that this is nearly as fast as just tapping on the screen. Then they were talking about a new mode because Lars actually mentioned that he wants to get, you know, more minimalistic while writing his notes. And that's a good idea because the less distractions you have during writing, the more focused you can work on. So he wanted to get rid of the toolbar and Gabriel actually mentioned and confirmed that they are thinking about such feature, which is even more exciting. They're really thinking about, do you even need a toolbar? Isn't it possible to use the Apple Pencil only? And if you look at Notes Plus, I showed you that you can actually control the whole app only using your Apple Pencil. So that's something they are working on and they actually call this focus mode as well. And then a highly requested feature as well. Notability showed it's possible that you can open two notebooks next to each other. Gabriel mentioned they are working on this and it will be even more exciting than the Notability version. Because, you know, in GoodNotes 5, you have the tabs where you can just switch between the different open notebooks. With the new feature, you will be able to see two notebooks next to each other with the tabs on top, so you can actually tap around, that's the idea behind the split screen feature coming to GoodNotes 5. And Gabriel also agreed that GoodNotes 5 is not finished yet and it isn't meant to be finished at all. The thing is, and I mentioned this already in my first video, I guessed it and Gabriel confirmed it now, 
they created GoodNotes 5 because they created a new basis they can work on in the future. So even mentioned, it's not only bringing updates on new features to GoodNotes, but even new versions of GoodNotes like GoodNotes 6, 7, 8 and so on. That just shows how important it was to program the whole note-taking app from the ground up again. GoodNotes 4 was already a very old note-taking app. It was very stable and so on. But with the all new iOS updates, it became more complicated to update GoodNotes notes for. So that's the reason why they decided to start from scratch and code everything from ground up. And you see Node Shelf 2 showed it as well. They had Node Shelf 1 for a very long time and then they released Node Shelf 2. And in Node Shelf 2 you haven't been even able to uh, rotate images or something like this. But month after month loads of new features were coming to Node Shelf 2 and they are still releasing new updates and so on. And this just shows how important a new coding structure is so you can actually implement new features much more easily. Another thing they've been talking about was the double tap feature with your Apple Pencil. So that's another thing uh, where you can actually in Node Shelf 2, you can actually choose what the app double tap does. However, in GoodNotes 5, you already can choose this as well. If you go into the system configuration of your Apple Pencil, there you can actually choose what the double tap on the overall system just makes, like, you know, going back to the last tool, doing nothing, going to the color palette and so on. If you like this video and if you like the way I update you about the new apps, just leave me a comment below, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, tell your friends, go to my website where you actually have a comparison tool where you can compare all these note-taking apps with each other and see what is the right note-taking app for you. So thanks a lot for watching and I see you next time.